Hi, I'm Matt Henderson, and I like making mathematical animations. Um, and recently I got a bit into making animations that demonstrate chaos theory. So today I wanted to show a few chaos theory animations. This one is bouncing balls, and it's a very simple system that demonstrates chaos theory. So what we have is actually two balls that you'll start to see it's two balls once they paths diverge. After just a few bounces, they're going on totally different chaotic paths. At the beginning, we've got, they're, on, they're almost on the same path. Almost. They start off um, right next to each other and their initial positions are only, are equal up to the fourth decimal place. And the point is that one of the hallmarks of chaos is that there's this high sensitivity to initial conditions where, you know, even if it's four decimal places off, the, the, the difference between the two is exponential over time until they are just on totally different paths, as it seems. This one is the key bounce, really, mm. yeah. When I posted this, I kind of posed the question, you know, isn't it surprising that such a simple system is chaotic? And of course the answer is no, because simple and chaotic aren't like opposites of each other. It, I, when I think of Chaos, maybe I think of the weather, you know, the butterfly effect. And that is a massively complex system and that exhibits chaos. But it's not because it's complex that it exhibits chaos. It's some more fundamental thing about the, you know, the non-linearity of the differential equations or something like that. This is in Mathematica again. It's actually quite a simple piece of code that is basically solving the differential equation. We've got four equations. I could write them down as well. The way it's written in the code is like this. So y dash dash of t equals minus g. So the second derivative of the y position is a function of t, and that is minus g, which is the gravitational constant. That's pretty obvious, right? Like the how much something is accelerating down is just due to gravity. So you're using the proper Earth's gravity as your number there in the, in the animation? Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because there's no scale cues, it's just some abstract circle in space. But I could, it happens to be like one meter wide, I think. <laughs> but, or the radius would be one meter, but you know. Cool. I, just have, I did put in 9.81 as that number. And then we have a similar one for x. This is to say that there's no acceleration left and right. These ones are just the initial conditions here, these last four here. So we'll have, we basically have the x and y start off at x0 and y0, which we will plug in. One ball will have a slightly different initial x0 than the other ball does. And then the other one is just to say that they start off stationary. So this is, you know, the derivatives start off at 0, 0. The speed in the x direction is zero, speed in the y direction is zero at the beginning. So there's this, there's this um, sneaky bit in here. So this is saying when it happens that x squared plus y squared equals one, which is the equation of the circle, then I'm going to change the derivative of x and y into the reflected values. Essentially, now Mathematica is going to take this set of equations it's going to look out for that crossing point on the circle and reflect the speeds. So I'm plugging in x and y. So this is the first ball, x is 0 0.001, just off the center, and y is 0.5. And then for the second ball, it's 0 0.0012. So it differs in the fourth decimal place. That's a, a horizontal difference. So the x's are left and right. So if you run this code, now what it's done is it's computed what these x and y positions are. So if I, if, if I want to just sort of visualize those, that's what one of the ball's paths looks like. And if I want to plot the other one, you know, change this to xf2, yf2. So this is the whole solution. So before you ever saw the animation, you saw this. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Spoil I that's a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, before I saw this, I saw a whole bunch of like, red boxes saying you got your code wrong. Um, <laughs> and maybe I saw a few where it didn't detect the circle properly or the reflection was wrong.
This one is another simple yet chaotic system. This one is sort of highlighting the difference between something that isn't chaotic and then just a subtle change that suddenly makes it chaotic. So here we have two pool tables, one with perfectly straight edges and one that has walls that are slightly curved. Now the balls all start moving off um, together in a group and the balls aren't going to interfere with each other. They're just separate tra trajectories modeled completely independently. So they're kind of, the balls are transparent to each other. Yeah, that's right. Obviously when they hit the wall, they're going to uh, reflect. You know, the pictures look pretty similar. Actually, these are now slightly more spread out because of the sort of like a, a mirror, a bendy mirror or like a lens kind of effect there. Are we calling that concave or convex? Yeah, it should be convex. convex to the table, but concave yeah. to the outside of the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess everything that's convex is also concave, depends on your perspective. And they bounce up here. And now you can really see that things have, first of all, they're balls in a different part of the table. While these are still in a, the circular shape that they started off in, these have now spread out into more of an elliptical shape. Just as with the other bouncing balls, Whoa. soon they're just all spread out and chaotic. And you know, if, if, I, if you were to see this picture without the lines, and you were to say, well, where did they start off? You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't have a clue, right? And actually, in, in a sense, it's a fundamental fact of the mathematics that you, would, you couldn't have a clue because you wouldn't be able to measure with enough precision um, if you let the time go on for long enough. And the other ones will stay in that circle forever. Yeah, this is a, you know, this is obviously a mathematical idealized pool table. What I wanted to get at was what is the sort of simplest change to a system that could result in chaos? You know, what's happening is that these bounces are more complex than these bounces, which are very linear. These ones are non-linear and they, they start spreading things out. And there's a whole field of studying these, they're called billiards problems, and you've got different types of billiards, different shapes, and it's kind of interesting. In a circle, for example, things are not chaotic and they kind of keep contracting in and out and bouncing around the circle. But other, you know, if you put like a square in the middle of the circle, it interferes with it and all of a sudden now it is chaotic. I wonder how long you would have to wait for that to return to a circle just by pure chance. There's a theorem that said that if you wait long enough, that would happen. Yeah, and obviously there's another point, which is the what would happen in the real world. Like people, when you're playing um, pool, you're going to be in a world more like this than than this. There's a, you're not going to have perfectly straight edges. So if you're looking at making a shot, you want to minimize the number of bounces that have to go exactly to your plan. Because after, you know, one, two, three, four, five bounces, things are way off trajectory from the ideal world. This is a, um, a water wheel that is a model for the Lorenz attractor, which you might have seen before as this kind of like butterfly shaped 3D thing that typifies a lot of uh, chaotic systems. What we've got is a, a water wheel with lots of these uh, buckets that can collect water. And we have water flowing in from the top. It's not stable so that when if you start filling up the top uh, bucket then it will start spinning in whatever direction is, it's off by. So here we start filling and it starts to spin to the left. So another aspect of this wheel is that the buckets are slowly leaking water which I haven't um, animated, but oh, you could imagine it as the water's evaporating or just disappearing over time. And there's also a little bit of um, friction to the wheel. These add up to giving a chaotic system in that the, the movement of this dot here, which is the center of mass of the wheel, that movement is chaotic. Center of mass, that's the center of the mass of the wheel, okay. Yeah, that's right. And it, I mentioned it's, a, it's related to the Lorenz system. Uh, the Lorenz system has this classic kind of 3D butterfly wing shape to it. 
And this is, this is kind of visible in the trace that the center of mass gives out. Yeah, it's kind of a coincidence, well, it's to a total coincidence that the butterfly effect is some aspect of chaos theory and that there's this butterfly wing shaped um, attractor that you get in a bunch of chaotic systems like this. But, you know, it's kind of a, a nice title is to say, like visualizing the butterfly effect. And I'm not sure if you really believe this looks that much like a butterfly. But <laughs> A tractor is a space, a subspace inside the 3D space that things end up converging onto. For in this case, you could start the wheel with any kind of initial motion or you could fill up the water anywhere you wanted. But if you let the, it evolve over time under its own laws of physics, the point will soon get onto this consistent kind of butterfly wing shape. 